Algebra 2 course, Lesson 7, the equation of a line. In this lesson we'll be talking about the equation of a line. But wasn't that what we covered in Lesson 6? Yes, but the concept of a line, the concept of slope, and learning how to draw a graph of the equation of a line are some of the most important skills we learn in Algebra 2. So they merit more than one lesson. In fact, looking ahead to Lesson 8, we'll be graphing equations or functions of lines. We can ask the question, why are lines and slope so important? You may recall from the introductory lesson when I explained how Algebra 2 was a keystone course for the rest of mathematics. I said that in college, there were two ways to go from here. If you should go into math, science, and engineering, you will go into calculus. And the concept of slope, the slope at a point, is one of the major emphases of calculus. And if you go into social studies and the social sciences, you will be studying statistics and be doing regression analysis which determines a line and statistics for a line. Knowing about lines and their attributes is very important. Understanding the equation of a line is vital not only in math but in the real world because slope represents change. If nothing changed we wouldn't need people. But things change in the world so the math we're discussing now is very practical and important. We have two lines labeled L1 and L2. What do you notice about these lines? L1 has a positive slope or rate of change. Line 2 has a negative slope because it goes down from left to right. We notice that the two lines intersect here. Later in the course we're going to discuss how to find this intersection point. In fact, we'll discuss different ways to find this point. We have already discussed in Lesson 4 why this point is so important. These lines, both of them, have x-intercepts, and both of these lines have y-intercepts. Let's ask the question, what is slope? Slope is the number that is the answer to the question, how much does y change when x is increased by one unit? Again, for emphasis, slope is the number that is the answer to the question, how much does y change when x is increased by one unit? Let's look at this graph. What do you notice about the graph? It has points on it and we can get from one point to the next by going over one to the right then up one. If we had one segment that went over one and up two, that would not make it a line but would mean that it would be a part of a curve or an arc or something else. An example of a relation with a positive slope or positive correlation would be like we saw in lesson six, the relation between age and height. Let's look at this graph. What do you notice about this graph? It goes down, so the slope of this line is negative, and it goes down one, then to the right one, then continues on. Let's consider this graph to help us understand the concept of slope. We start with these two points. To get from one point to the other, we go over to the right, or change in x, of five units. And we have a change of y up 15 units. And now we look at the slope formula. Verbally, it's m equals the change in y over or divided by the change in x. And in this case, it will be 15 over 5, which equals 3. So if, if we were to increase x by 1, the change in y would be 1 times 3 equals 3. If we had a change in x of negative 4, we would have a change in y of negative 4 times 3, which equals negative 12. And if we had included the coordinate grid as we have here, we could be able to determine the change of x and the change in y from just counting the units or boxes. We're going to find the slope or rate of change. Let's look at these two points. We have negative 4 comma negative 1 and 6 comma 4. These two points, of course, define the line here drawn in red. One way of doing this is with the slope formula. m for slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And of course the points need to be labeled as x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. And plugged into the slope formula we have 4 minus negative 1 in the numerator and 6 minus negative 4 into the denominator. And that becomes 5 over 10 equals 1 half. And decimalized, that is m or slope equals 0.5. Alternatively, we could do the version where we place the two points in a table. Putting the points in a table is step one. Step two is drawing arrows on both sides of the table. 
Step three is to find the differences on both sides of the table. On the left side, we have negative four minus six equals negative 10. On the right side, we have negative one minus four equals negative five. Step four is to place right hand over left, which is negative five over negative 10. And step five is to calculate the slope, which equals one half or 0.5. So we get the same number or thing as when we apply the slope formula in the more traditional manner. And when we superimpose a graph, a grid over the points, we count a change in x of 10 and a change in y of 5. And verbally we can say that x increases from negative 4 to 6 for an increase of 10. And we can also say that y increases from negative 1 to 4 for an increase of 5. Now let's look at these two points. We'll find the slope of the line connecting these points. We have negative 4 comma 2 and 5 comma negative 1. And with these points, we construct a line. I invite you to stop the video and see if you can work out the slope of the line between these two points. Then restart the video to see how you did. Here's the problem worked out using both the slope formula and the version with the table. We can see that either method yields the same answer, a slope of negative one-third. And by counting the unit squares on a grid, we have three down and nine over for a slope of negative three-ninths which reduces to negative one-third. How do we use slope? In geometry, at some point, you learned about parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Here we have two lines labeled L1 and L2. These lines appear to be parallel. If they are parallel, what do we know about them? We know that their slopes are equal, and we can write that they are equal by the equation M1 equals M2. M1 represents the slope of line one, and M2 represents the slope of line two. We also know that no matter how far or where we go on these lines, that they will never get closer to one another. We can notate these lines like this. L1, two vertical line segments, then L2, which means that L1 is parallel to L2. So if two lines are parallel, their slopes are the same. Now we're going to look at two lines that are perpendicular, and these two lines are perpendicular. Where they cross forms a right angle, in fact, four right angles. That the lines cross at right angles is shown by the little angle square in one of the corners. If two lines are perpendicular, the slope of one line is equal to the negative reciprocal of the slope of the other line. This can be written as m1 equals negative 1 over m2. So if l1 has a slope of 1 half, then l2 would have a slope of negative 2 over 1 or negative 2. Let's say we had a line with a slope of 5. What would be the slope of the line that is perpendicular to this line with a slope of 5? Try to figure it out. What would the slope of that line be? Stop the video and try to figure it out. The slope of a perpendicular line is negative 1 over 5 or negative 1 fifth. We can test by multiplying the two slopes together so we get negative 1 fifth times 5 equals negative 1. The test is to multiply two slopes together, and if the product of the two slopes is negative one, the lines are perpendicular. We can express that the lines are perpendicular with this expression at the top. The symbol circled in blue is the symbol for perpendicular. Now we're going to learn how to go from determining the slope given two points to finding the equation of a line given two points. We're given the two points two comma negative two and six comma 10. And the problem is given the two points, what is the equation of the line containing these two points? This is a skill that is expected in algebra curriculums worldwide. This problem is going to take some detective work to get from what we know to what we don't know. We'll use the slope formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We can label the points x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. It doesn't matter which one is chosen to be x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. And here are the numbers substituted into the slope formula. We have 10 minus negative 2 over 6 minus 2. And that gives us 12 over 4, which reduces to 3 over 1, which can be written as 3. From here, we can use the formula y equals mx plus b to find what b is to complete the formula. This is the detective work continued. What we'll do is use the calculated slope, 3 for m. We'll use the point 6 comma 10 by plugging in 6 for x. 
and we'll use 10 for y. And here it is with everything substituted in. We have 10 equals 3 times 6 plus b. What was it that caused me to use 6 comma 10 instead of 2 comma negative 2? It doesn't matter really, but in this case I wanted to use positive numbers to lessen the chances for mistakes. And that simplifies to 10 equals 18 plus b. Now we'll come up on the right side and work down from there. We subtract 18 from both sides of the equation. We cancel 18 minus 18 on the right side of the equation. We bring down what's left and we have b equals negative 8. Now we can get the equation by substituting 3 for the slope or m and negative 8 for the y-intercept or b. And that gives us the equation y equals 3x minus 8. And finally we check using the unused point 2 comma negative 2. And that becomes negative 2 equals 3 times 2 minus 8. That simplifies to negative 2 equals 6 minus 8. And that finally simplifies to negative 2 equals negative 2. Check. So that proves or verifies that the equation is y equals 3x minus 8, which we box in as correct. Now we have the next problem. Find the equation of the line that contains 2 comma 9 and is parallel to the line 2x plus y equals 5. This is another level of complexity. On the last problem we used just two points. Here we have just one point and a slope. And we really to not have we really do not have a slope yet, but we will have to do a little algebra with the equation to find it. First, what did we say about a parallel line? A parallel line has the same slope. So let's find the slope of the line 2x plus y equals 5. We'll need to solve for y. Let's subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. 2x minus 2x cancel each other on the left side of the equation. We bring down what's left, and we have y equals negative 2x plus 5. And we see that the slope is negative 2. From here we can use the slope-intercept form y equals mx plus b. To figure this out, we plug in the slope of negative 2 for m. We use the coordinates in our point, 2 comma 9. We substitute 2 for x. And we substitute the 9 for y. So that gives us 9 equals negative 2 times 2 plus b. That becomes 9 equals negative 4 plus b. Add 4 to both sides of the equation. Negative 4 plus 4 cancel on the right side. We bring down what's left, and we have b equals 13. So now we have all we need for our equation in slope-intercept form, and it's y equals negative 2x plus 13 up here on the right side. And to check our work, the only thing we can use is the 1 point, 2 comma 9, that is given. That becomes 9 equals negative 2 times 2 plus 13, and that's 9 equals negative 4 plus 13, and that simplifies to 9 equals 9. Check. So we box in the equation y equals negative 2x plus 13 is our correct answer. Now we'll do another problem, this one relating to a perpendicular line. Find the equation of a line that contains the point negative 2 comma 5 and is perpendicular to the line 2x minus 3y equals 9. This is going to be the same process as solving for a parallel line plus one more step, converting a slope to the slope of a perpendicular line. The first step we'll take is to find the slope of the equation. We'll place the equation in slope-intercept form first by subtracting 2x from both sides of the equation. 2x minus 2x cancel on the left side. We bring down negative 3y equals 9 minus 2x. We can rearrange the equation on the right side so that negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 9. Next, we divide both sides, or all terms of the equation, by negative 3. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 cancel on the left side of the equation to equal 1. We bring down what's left, and that's y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. To find the slope that is perpendicular to this line, we have to look at this slope, 2 thirds. For the perpendicular line, we need the slope that is a negative reciprocal, so it becomes negative 3 over 2. Just flip the fraction and change the sign from positive to negative. So now we take the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, negative 3 over 2 will replace the m, or slope. 
5 will replace the y, and negative 2 will replace the x. So that gives us 5 equals negative 3 halves times negative 2 plus b. The 2 over 2 cancel on the, and the two negative signs cancel, so we have 5 equals 3 plus b. To solve for b, we subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. 3 minus 3 cancel on the right side of the equation, so we have b equals 2. So that makes our equation y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. And to test the equation, we plug back in the point we have, which is negative 2 for x and 5 for y. And we can cancel out the 2 over 2 and the two negative signs as we did before. And that equals 5 on the right side, just like the 5 on the left side, check. So having checked, we box in the equation y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2 is our correct answer. We found the equation of a line given two points. We found the equation of a parallel line given a line plus one point. We found the equation of a line that is perpendicular to a line given the line plus one point. Let's go over a step-by-step -step summary of how to find the equation of a line. Step one, find the slope between two points on the line. Step two, substitute the coordinates into one of the points and the calculated slope into the y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. Then solve for b. Step three, write the equation in y equals mx plus b form. And step four, check the line with one of the points. We'll go over one last problem to demonstrate or review the four step process in action. Find the equation of the line containing the two points. The points given are negative three comma negative four and two comma six. But as always, I invite you to stop the video and work the problem, then start the video to see how you did. We go to step one, find the slope. And here it is worked out using the slope formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 on the left side. Fully reduced, the slope is 2 over 1, which equals 2. We could also have determined the slope using the five-step table format version of the slope formula shown here in the middle of the graphic. And using graph paper, we would also be able to plot the points and observe the rise of 10 and the run of 5 and calculate slope from this manner. And now we use the coordinate along with the slope to plug into the slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. Here with blue arrows in football play fashion we see where each number goes in the equation. And substituted we have negative 4 equals 2 times negative 3 plus b and that's negative 4 equals negative 6 plus b. Add 6 to both sides of the equation. Negative 6 plus 6 cancel on the right side of the equation to equal 0. We are left with b equals 2. Now step 3, write the equation. It's y equals 2x plus 2. And finally to step 4, check the line with one of the points. And here on the right side is the equation y equals 2x plus 2 with the arrows pointing to where the numbers from the point 2 comma 6 will be substituted to check. That becomes 6 equals 2 times 2 plus 2. That simplifies to 6 equals 4 plus 2, and that is 6 equals 6. And since 6 equals 6, we can check it off as correct and box in the equation y equals 2x plus 2. Here I've labeled each piece of the visual according to step numbers 1 through 4. At the beginning of the lesson, I said that this lesson, how to find the equation of a line, is important. Why is it important? It's important because we know that if we have only two points, we can construct a mathematical model that we can use to predict a lot of things. In calculus, you learn to find the slope and equation of a very special line. And it would be like this red line touching the blue graph of a curve at one point. To reinforce understanding, I invite you to do a parallel line problem and to do a perpendicular line problem. This is important because in the real world there are many relations that are linear or that can be approximated by a line. If we know how to determine the equation of a line, we can figure out things that change at a constant rate of change or to close to a constant rate of change. Think about driving a car at a constant rate of speed. What would a graph of that relation look like? At a rate of 50 miles per hour, it would look something like this. In lesson eight, we'll look at our third in this series of linear equations, how to graph the equation of a line.
This has been Algebra 2, Course Lesson 7, The Equation of a Line. Thanks for viewing.